Jonathan, who was the friend of David, in spite of the fact that Jonathan's father, King Saul, has ordered an APB for the life of David. Assassinate him is what he told them to do. But in this lesson entitled Love and Devotion to Others, we're going to see the love that Jonathan had for his friend David that surpassed their honor and respect of his violent father, King Saul. There are notes for this lesson. Click the link below. I'll leave a link above my head. Click that link right there. Get your notes, your books, and your Bibles for the international lesson is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Hello, welcome to another edition of the Sunday School Lesson as taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries Church of God in Christ, 1700 West 87th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. Welcome to you new subscribers and thank you for subscribing to this channel. We go over the International Sunday School Lesson verse by verse, key words and key phrases. For those of you who would like to be notified each week as we upload our Sunday School lessons, make sure you click that thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and then that bell notification. That way YouTube will notify you each week. Bing! Brother Jones just uploaded another lesson. We got another powerful lesson here. I have my notes here. I pray that you all have downloaded your notes already. If you have any problems, just send me an email to Rodney Jones Sunday School at gmail.com and I will speak or deal with it myself. I'm trying to retrain myself on how to speak. I had a little incident and knocked off my front teeth, but it's all right. And uh, I'm on the honey-do list. I'm remodeling the house. It's a big honey-do. Honey, remodel my house. Our topic for today is love and devotion to others. When 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 7, our date for discussion is October the 4th. The year is 2020. And yes, this is the International Sunday School lesson. I'm going to be teaching this lesson in honor of my dear mother who passed on last year, 2019. October the 3rd is her birthday. May she rest in peace. Love you, mama. This lesson is dedicated to you. It says, And Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. Now this first verse is going to be kind of lengthy with the notes, but we're going to move on and move kind of expeditiously as possible. I create words. So point number one, Saul was anointed and installed as the first king of Israel. And you'll find that in the first Samuel 11 and 15. And Saul was told by God to go and destroy the Amalekites in first Samuel, the 15th chapter. But Saul rejected God. He rejected the word of God and he rejected his assignment to kill and wipe out all of the Amalekites. And because he did that, God rejected Saul from being king. And at the same time, God would be raising up David to be king. And later, David would be anointed king uh, over the Israelites, although he was not yet the king. That's first Samuel, the 16th chapter, somewhere around verse one and then verse 13. Number two, Saul attempts to kill David personally, but it did not work in first Samuel, the 18th chapter in verse 11. Out of pure hatred and out of pure jealousy, Saul throws a javelin, which we're going to talk about again in my notes. He threw it at David, but he missed David. 
And then Saul was afraid of David because of the fact that the Lord was with him. You find that in 1 Samuel 18 and 14. And therefore he put out an APB against David to kill him. Point number three is Saul speaks to Jonathan, his son, and to all of his servants to kill David for nothing. And the word kill here is the word for execute or the word is ass 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 Woo! assassinate. There it is. I'm getting used to it. Assassinate. Since there's no reason for killing him, there's no sentence of any law that David has broken. David didn't move against the king. And out of pure hatred, the king wants to kill David. It's called assassination. It's called execute. So it appears no reason given, but he tells them or he gives them a command to kill. Because now Saul has rejected the word of the Lord and David. That's 1 Samuel 15 in 23, jealousy kicked in to reign over the king who was reigning over the people of God. And Song of Songs 8 and 6 says jealousy is cruel as the grave. And now David has just finished slaughtering the Philistines. That's chapter 18, verse 6, which was an assignment that Saul gave David, chapter 18 and verse 5. And David was doing what the king commanded him to do placed him there, but David was so great at it until the king got angry and jealous. And that's a note. Many will hate you because you're good at what you do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Instead of getting angry with God, they're going to get angry with you because what you do, you do it by nature. Don't stop doing what you do to appease people, to please man. But if the Lord has given you an assignment to teach and you're very good at teaching, do it and let the doors open and flow. You don't have to campaign or anything just like David didn't have to campaign. David was out there tending the sheep when the man of God came to the house of Jesse and the oil refused to pour on his sons. He says, I'm sure. Do you have another man? And that man was David and he was anointed king. So the women came out singing and dancing about David and Saul. But they sang the wrong song. The song was Saul has slain his thousands. But David, his ten thousands in chapter 18 and seven. And Saul was very wroth and displeased at that verse eight of the 18th chapter. Saul says, according to the Amplified Version, now what more can he have but the kingdom? And then the Bible says in the Amplified Version, Saul looked at David with suspicion and jealousy. From that day forward, first Samuel 18 and nine, the King James Version says Saul eyed David. I got my eyes on you is what happens. And then an evil spirit came upon Saul and David played the harp again. Chapter 18 and 10. That's when Saul threw the javelin at David against the wall. But David dodged it and he escaped it, according to the 18th chapter in the 11th verse. One thing you know about me, I like to give a lot of scripture for what I speak about. And the purpose of that is because uh, I know and understand that I have a wide audience of people that are watching and I'm putting all I can on the table so that you can use whatever it is that you need to use in your lesson. So Saul now tells Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David. This point number six is a test of the commitment to, of Jonathan to David. Do you honor your father? by killing your brother, or do you honor your covenant by hiding your brother or your friend? Do you disobey your father? So my question on the floor is, did Jonathan disobey God's command to honor your father and your mother by disobeying his father's command to kill David? And honor your father and your mother is Deuteronomy 5 and 6. My question is, did Jonathan dishonor the command of honoring your father and your mother when he disobeyed his father to kill his friend? Think about that. Give me some answers. Yes or no. And let's open up a dialogue. Let's go ahead. And the floor is open for discussion. What is your answer and how do you see this whole incident? Mm -hmm. Verse number two. 
But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning and abide in a secret place and hide thyself. Jonathan, the Bible says, delighted much in David. And the word delighted is the word that means to have pleasure, to have favor, or even to be pleased. Regardless of the jealousy of Saul towards David, Jonathan still delighted in him. The Bible lets us know in 1 Samuel 18 and 1 that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved David as his own soul, chapter 18, verse 1. And Jonathan and David made a covenant between the two of them. Jonathan told David of his father's plan to assassinate him. Jonathan cautions David to be careful of your whereabouts because it could be in the evening time, you don't know who is looking. You don't know who's watching. So he tells him to do two things. Take heed to thyself until the morning and hide thyself. When you look at the word heed, it's a verb meaning to watch, to keep, to preserve, to guard, to be careful, to watch over, to watch carefully over, or even to be on one's guard. He says, be careful, be on your guard and hide yourself right now and hide yourself until the morning. I love this about Jonathan because Jonathan is showing true friendship for a man who he made a covenant with. Because in spite of the fact that Jonathan's father, the king, tells him to kill David, Jonathan chooses not to. At this point, Jonathan technically is putting his life on the line for David, and David is putting his life on the line for Jonathan because Jonathan could be setting David up. After all, he is the king's son. But David trusts the friendship between he and Jonathan. Jonathan tells David to hide in a secret place until the morning. And Jonathan is about to put his father, the king, to the test for David's sake and for his safety. Verse number three. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art. Notice what he said, where thou art. And I will commune with my father of thee and what I see that I will tell thee. So Jonathan not only tells him to be careful, to watch your whereabouts, he tells him also to hide himself somewhere where only he apparently and Jonathan will be able to know where he is. And then he says, this is what I'm going to do. This is the next step that I'm going to do. I'm going to go and I'm going to walk with my father. I'm going to walk beside my father. Notice where he's going to do it. I'm going to walk beside him in the field where you are. So apparently Jonathan is going to know what field, what central location, what central area David is going to be. And at any point, all Jonathan has to do is tell his father he's in that cave, he's under that tree, he's hiding behind that stone, whatever the case may be. And then he says, and what I will do is I will walk with my father, I will commune, I will talk. I will unfold, I will dialogue with my father concerning you. I'm going to talk to my father about you. And then he says, and what I see. And it's interesting, he didn't say what he says, he said, but what I see. And I believe King James lets us know the word see, which means to be visible with the eye. I believe what Jonathan is telling David, I'm going to watch the way my father walked, the way he handled himself. I'm going to see if my father still has that javelin in his hand. I'm going to see if my father stutters. I'm going to see if his eyeballs, if he's crossing his fingers, if he's crossing his feet, if he's crossing his eyes. He says, I'm going to see. I have to see literally with my eye the reaction of my father, and then I'm going to tell you everything I see. So Jonathan not only tells him to hide, he says, but I will step in also and I will help you. Jonathan serves as the mediator between the kings, between the two kings, King Saul and King David. And Jonathan has to exercise wisdom in all that he, that he does with his father because it can backfire. His father can notice that he is up to something. He can have him executed because many kings had their sons executed. 
or because understand something, Saul was moody at times as well. And therefore, Jonathan has to put his father to the test to see if he can tell his friend to come back out. So his hands is now in the hand of his friend. Look at the three wheels of Jonathan. I will go out and stand beside my father. I will commune with my father about you and I will tell thee whatever I see. The field where thou art. So he's probably going to know his location to where he is going to be. Verse number four. And Jonathan spoke good of David unto Saul, his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he have not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee was very good. So, so far, Jonathan has kept his word. We see Jonathan apparently walking with his father in the field somewhere close to where David would be. Because remember, he says, this field where you are. We see him in the field walking with his father. So, so far, he kept his word. And point number two, he's speaking good of David to his father, the king. So, so far, everything is going pretty good. But he tells his father, notice what he calls him. He doesn't say, daddy, don't do it. He says, let not the king. So Jonathan honors his father by his title. Let not the king sin against his servant. Because at this point, it would be a sin if, John, uh, if Saul does anything against David, because David hadn't done anything wrong. So if you do anything to David at this point, it would be a sin against your servant. He says, because David has not sinned against you and because his works have been to thee very good. So Jonathan kept his promise to David. He spoke good to his father concerning David. He gives reasons to his father why he should not kill David. Number one, it would be committing sin against David. Number two, because David didn't sin against the king. And number three, all the works of David was towards the king and very good. And I'm going to add another one because number four, had he killed David, then he would have been uh, in, in, in jeopardy. He would have been in trouble with God. I want to say this to somebody. Be careful who you assassinate their character. Be careful who you put your mouth on. Be careful who you try to destroy. Be careful because you don't know if they have been called or placed by God to even save you. Understand what's going on. It's because of David that King Saul and Jonathan are able to walk and talk because of what David did. So he said all of his works was to you were very good or was appointed to you or was placed towards you. Or he did all of this because of you is what he was saying. Verse five, for he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine. And the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it and didst rejoice. Wherefore then will thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? Now, number one, he says he put his life in his hands. How he put his life in his hands is when he slew the Philistine. This giant Goliath was so humongous and so big to scripture or history says he was some nine feet tall. And it is said that many of the average Jews of that day and time was four feet, nothing, four feet to five feet. So you figure, let's say if David was five feet and Goliath was nine feet, he would be looking four feet in the air at a giant. Yet it did not move. It didn't bother David because David was upset with this man who defiled the Lord God is what David said. And David, rather than taking a sword that King Saul offered him and his armor, David took his smooth stone and his slingshot and David destroyed him. He was so big until uh, Jonathan calls him the Philistine. And he said, and the Lord wrought a great salvation. The Lord wrought a great salvation through the hands of David. So the Philistines was always warring against the Israelites. Uh, David was not afraid of them. David defeated the, the giant. That's 1 Samuel 17 and 49. He used his 
smooth rock, 1 Samuel 17 and 49. David cut off the head of Goliath with Goliath's own sword, the 17th chapter and the 51st verse. And then King asks his uh, captain of his host to go and bring David to him. That's the 17th chapter, verses 55 and 56. Abner brings David to the king. He asks him about who he is. And David unfolds, tells him of his family tree, his family traits and everything. And he explains him everything when he finishes. Not only that, but while he's talking to the king, he has the head of Goliath in his hand. First Samuel 15 or uh, 17 and 57. After David finished talking, that's when his son Jonathan's soul was knit to the soul of David, 1 Samuel 18 and 1. And there was an immediate connection of the souls of Jonathan and the soul of David. And the Bible said the soul of Jonathan was knit, literally chained itself together. And then Jonathan loved David as much as he loved himself. And Jonathan would put his life, he would put David before him. And Romans 12 and 10 says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. So they were no doubt connected emotionally and spiritually. They were both very young. They were both warriors. First Samuel 14 and 6. Jonathan was a follower of the Lord, 1 Samuel 14 and 10. They both had a zeal. They had kinship, spirit, and connection. They had a love that was bonded and sealed immediately. And it is stated that friendship is considered as a union of souls bound together by the bond of love. The Bible lets us know he loved him as he loved himself, which is one of the greatest commandments. Love thy neighbor as thyself, that would be Mark 12 and 31. So Jonathan says, thou sawest it and didst rejoice. You saw what David did to Goliath. David brought the head of Goliath to the king and you were rejoicing and everyone else was rejoicing at what he had done. He questions, why would you then sin against innocent blood? The innocent blood would be the blood of David. Why would you order an assassination against a man who did everything good to you and for you and nothing against you? Verse 6, Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And the word hearken means to listen with the intent of obeying what has been said. After Jonathan places his life technically uh, on a stake for his friend David, the Bible lets us know that Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan. And two things happened in all of this. Number one, Saul hearkened, and number two, Saul swore. He made a vow that as the Lord liveth and he does live, he shall not be slain. So the plan of action worked for the time being. His brother and friend Jonathan now spared David's life. And Jonathan literally risks his own life for David because the rage and the anger of the king, he could have had his own son killed. But Saul swore by the Lord himself that as he liveth, the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And then lastly, verse 7, and Jonathan called David. And Jonathan showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. So apparently his father and the son, because I don't think he called them right there, they left the scene. And then later, Jonathan calls for David to come out of the hiding place. Everything's good. It's all good, bro. I got you. I took care of you. I'm your buddy. I'm your ride or die. It's all good. You clear to go. The eagle has landed. Come on out. Everything is fine. As my brother Walter would say, the water is fine. The water is fine. So Jonathan is the man in this lesson. And he calls David out of hiding. 
And Jonathan shows, he shows David all that has transpired. And the word showed is a verb meaning to tell, to report, to make known, or even to explain. So Jonathan brought David to Saul once again, and David is now restored back into the presence of the palace. He is now back in action working with and for the king. The lesson is called love because we're still in this series in dealing with love, love and devotion to others, love and devotion to others. It's so important that as we love people that we understand and we demonstrate the love, demonstrate the devotion that we have to them, for them, because of them, and oftentimes in spite of them. No, you don't have to cut up people. No, you don't have to sin against people without cause. And yes, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. And many people, I do understand, have moved against you because of jealousy. They moved against you because of fear. And they moved against you because the Lord has blessed you tremendously because you love the Lord and you have subject yourself unto his will. And people just like Saul did, who was the first king, moved against the man who helped to deliver him and the entire nation of the children of Israel. The lesson lets us know that David, because of David, the Lord calls a great salvation of the children of Israel through David. And what was that great salvation? He delivered them out of the hands of the Philistines, out of the hand of the great giant, the great warrior. He would take this little old boy from the back of the field, bring him into the palace and use him to destroy the enemies of the entire nation. And there are many of you who have the people, the church, the leaders have moved against you, not understanding that it was because of you that they are effective. It's because of you that they are where they are on today, yet because of jealousy, because people stop singing praises about how the pastor killed his thousand, but how the deacon or how the minister or how the assistant pastor or how the evangelist or how the missionary have killed their 10,000. Many people are coming just because of you. Brother Pastor, that's a beautiful thing because it's all in the plan of God. You may not be the top dog, but understand you're still the pastor. You're still the shepherd. And that person is not moving against you. That person is trying to support you. That person is trying to help you. As they're trying to help you, make sure you consider the fact that the Lord possibly has them there for a reason and don't move against them for naught is what the old folks say. Don't move against them and go ahead and be encouraged and do the will of the Lord in spite of the hell that you may be going through and understand the Bible says of God before us, who can be for against us? That's it. This is a good lesson. That right there was for somebody. If that was for you, type in here, it's for me. If you don't want to type it, you can send me an email to Rodney Jones Sunday School at gmail.com. Continue to look up, bless one another, go back to your classes and teach them to only do the right way, the right thing, and only do the things that's pleasing to the Lord. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button and tell somebody about this channel. Tell somebody and share this to somebody. Maybe this lesson will impact and change lives. Remember my model, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. And the model of the Sunday school of child saved is a soul saved plus a life. Amen. Amen.